I'm an individual who identifies as having several mental health issues. Uh, I've been given many, many different labels from clinical depression, severe depression, depressive disorder. About 10 years ago, they gave me another one, adjustment disorder. I still don't know what I'm adjusting to or disordering from. I don't take and spend a lot of time on that today. What I choose to spend my time on today is how am I going to lead a life that I direct instead of somebody else directs? I know what it's like to have professionals tell me what to do, what time to get up, what I'm going to wear, what I'm going to eat, where I'm going to go, and how I'm going to do it. I know what it's like to be told what to do. You know what I want today? I want to take and do it my way today. I want to take and walk my way. The system wanted to take and control us. They wanted to take and tell us what to do, when to do, how to do, and why to do, okay? You know what? We have to change that system around. It's about my goal. It's not about my therapist's goal for me. Why do I care? You know what? I had a therapist that wanted me to be medication compliant. That was their goal. That wasn't my goal. I wasn't interested in being medication compliant. You know what I was interested in? Getting a job. Getting on with my life. Having some success and having a safe affordable home. individualized and person-centered. They need to be based upon what the person wants. They need to be in concert with that individual, what they want, how they want, and when they want it. And you know, many of us are moving on the recovery path at very different speeds. Some of us are slower. Some of us are faster. Some of us, uh, some things work for some people. Some things don't work for some people. There is no one approach to finding recovery. Recovery is individual for each and every person, and we need to recognize that. I didn't always get up in the morning and feel good about the day. I didn't always shower. I didn't always clean up. I didn't always wear clean clothes. I would wear clothes for day in and day out. I know what it was like. I know what it's like to take and be locked up in a room, not able to leave that room. I, there were a lot of services that I was in that I did not feel respected. I was in a continuing day treatment program. I don't know if you have that here in Georgia or not, continuing day treatment. Uh, there's a couple of things wrong with that. The first one is the name, continuing. Does it ever end? Are you ever running out of it? Um, they sent me to a continuing day treatment program. I had told them that I wanted three things. I wanted to be able to get a job, I wanted to be able to make eye contact with people, and I wanted to communicate with people. Those were the three things I said when I walked in there that I wanted. Okay. About a week and a half later, they called me into what they call a treatment team meeting, where six yeah. professionals yeah. are sitting at a table, yeah. and you've got the chair directly across from them, yeah. and the sweat is rolling off you, and you have no idea what they're going to say to you, and your eyes are as big as saucers, and you say, I wonder what's going to happen next. What are they going to do? So I'm sitting there, and they said, we've come up with a program for you. I said, oh boy, here we go. I said, then what's that? They said, we want you to take and go to a workshop. I said, what's that? They said, well, it's a program where you can go for six hours a day. I said, what am I going to be doing while I'm there? And those of you that know me, you've heard this story before, but I, I want to share it with the audience. They said, you're going to be putting lipstick tube caps on lipstick tubes. I said, I'm going to what? I said, you're going to be putting lipstick tube caps on lipstick tubes. I said, oh my, this is quite a problem. And they said, and oh, by the way, you're going to make 11 cents an hour while you do it. Uh, I said, wow, my dreams have been realized. This is a <laughs> Well, I sat there for a minute and I said, all right, let me try to challenge this one. How is that going to help me to better communicate with people? You know what they said to me? Go to the program, you'll see. I thought a little bit more. I said, how is that going to help me to make eye contact with people? They said, go to the program, you'll see. I said, how is that going to help me to take and deal with a three-year time gap on my resume that I can't explain? Because I don't want to say that I was listed in and out of hospitals during that whole three years. You know what they told me? Go to the program, you'll say, well, uh, you're a lovely audience, and I wouldn't say to you what I said to them. <laughs> it was my real New York style that, uh, that they didn't like. Um, but it, it was interesting. I'm very glad today that I did tell them what they could do with their program. 
But you know, a very interesting thing happened as a result of that. I, I, I wonder today, if I had said yes, would I still be putting lipstick tube caps on lipstick tubes? I would be able to be here today with you guys where I want to be, where there's real power. Is recovery is having a meaningful life in the community that we choose to live in, not in a hospital. In Many of us have been locked up in institutions for many, many years, haven't we? Yeah. We weren't allowed to be in the community, were we? We were cast aside and forgotten about. Well, you know what? It's time for us not to be forgotten about anymore. The time to make us back. But in New York State, to keep one person in a state-operated psychiatric center for one year, you know what it costs? $200,000. Now, if you give me $200,000 a year, I promise you I won't be anywhere near a state-operated psychiatric center, and I won't ask for anything else to say. Talking about the, uh, the report from Nashville, that we're dying 25 years earlier than the general population. A lot of times because medications that they're prescribing to us, not taking a look at what's really going on with us. Some of us have gone to the hospital saying we're having chest pains. Do you know what they tell us? Oh, that's all in your head. No, it's not. It's in my chest. It's not my head. It's in my chest. Okay? Would you please listen to me, doctor? Right? Oh, no. You're one of those individuals that have been labeled with a mental health issue. You don't know how to take care of yourself. You don't know what's wrong with you. Who better is going to know what's wrong with me than me? <laughs> you know what? I hear the system say, we're going to empower you. You know what? It doesn't happen, folks. It does not happen, all right? We empower ourselves, all right? We can take and put out a full buffet of skills, and we can take and learn those skills, and we can become able to speak in our own voice. But don't think that anything's going to ever empower you. There are ways that you can become empowered, and you have to drive the ship known as empowerment. Don't let the system crush. I know what it was like to live without hope. I felt it, I lived it, I couldn't understand what was going on. Today, I know what it's like to live with hope. With hope. I am firmly convinced that today I can lead a lifestyle that I want based upon principles that I'm going to take and follow. And hope was a critical component. Do you know where I got hope back in my life? In the rooms of self-help groups. That's where I got hope. I have traveled all over this country and everywhere that I've been, I've heard the same thing over and over and over again from people. Without hope, it's not possible. So we need to inspire hope on those individuals that haven't made it as far as we are today. We need to share what we do, how we do, when we do, so that they have the skills that they can take and have hope in their lives and know that they don't have to be dependent upon this system anymore. Okay? We don't have to be dependent on it.